Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Shushi Z. I'll probably get a lot of flack for this one, but I actually lived through a lot of this and I'll share my own experiences. But apparently there was a group, there was a, a black person that spoke about hood people and how they're scared of hood people and things about the hood and the hood was not happy about this. So there's some pushback and people are saying you're dividing us, you know, amongst the black people. Let's check it out. Please like, share down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that chow. It's chow time. Okay, I'm confused because I thought, sorry, I thought the whole narrative was that people who are constantly like, yeah, I'm a hood nigga. I don't play. I'll crash out about anything type of people who are ready to shoot you in the face if you step on their Jordans. The type of girl who immediately wants to take it outside if you accidentally spill your drink. Literally a drop wanting to fight over spilled milk. The people who brag about how dangerous their cities are, like get into competitions, like about East St. Louis, Baltimore, all that kind of stuff. Like I thought y'all wanted us to be afraid of you. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, did I misinterpret that? Like, <laughs> like I thought the whole point was that people knew that you weren't the first or second or the third. So if I miss something and now when people are saying that they're scared, it's anti-black, but like, wasn't that the point to be dangerous and big and bad? What's up, YouTube? My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. All right, guys, here's a confusing point that I think is really easy to clear up. The only reason I'm actually doing this is because the woman who began this whole trend of black people being honest, that a lot of people shared a lot of different things, but we know what's been very controversial, highly controversial, is people saying, hey, I feel uncomfortable around people from the hood. But she commented on my first video I did, and she added a bit of clarification to what some people said may have been willful ignorance on the part of other black people who felt offended by what she said. But remember, being offended is a choice. A lot of these people that are offended by a lot of these things, they just want to be offended. They want to be outraged. They want to cause an issue about what you said. Nevertheless, she clarified and said, I am the originator of the post. When I said hood people, I was referring to a mindset because that's what it is. And this is um, important why. Well, because what it seems like happened is even though the woman who began the trend actually said she grew up in the hood, regardless of all that, there's still some black people who felt attacked and said, hey, I'm nothing like the people who you're calling hood. And so what a lot of people are asking for is there needs to be clarification. And guys, if you watched my original video, you heard me say it would be ignorant to assume that every person it's who's true. lived in the hood or is from the hood or may even currently be in the hood fits the mindset. I guess when I read her post, even before I watched any other video, I knew she was talking about a particular Same. group of people, right? Just like when I say things, and this is kind of funny because a lot of people won't say anything if I say women today are out of their minds. They'll say, oh yeah, women today are out of their minds. Yes, I agree. But as a married man, obviously I found a woman who drinks coffee and there are other men out there who have good wives. I have a bunch of videos and series on other men who are married to good people. So people assume that we're talking about a general understanding of a particular topic. But in case you need a clarification, here it is. I appreciate her for doing this, but it goes on to say, it's not a good mindset as we all know. I've dealt with people who have this mindset my whole life and it's always been a negative experience, which is why I can say I feel a bit anxious when I'm around people with this mindset. It's my personal experience. I genuinely meant no harm. I don't think there's anything wrong with what she said. Now, there are just some people who are going to be offended by this post because they may actually... There's going to be people offended that I am reacting to this particular post, this particular video. At, 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 I'm not the right skin color to react or to put my own input or opinions into this, but I lived through this. Uh, we had a gas station in the ghetto. We've had shootings. We've had crazy things happened in our shop. I've dealt with this. You know, I've seen ghetto from or from the hood from 
Hispanics and blacks and the white people because I lived in a ghetto where it encompassed every single one of them and each of the groups acted very differently. Fit that stereotype and embrace that mindset. Now, if you're saying we shouldn't call out toxicity that's promoted in songs, in black culture, a lack of fathers in homes, etc., then you are the problem. You're the problem. But to any person who thought, I don't necessarily fit this blanket statement, I think this provides some clarity. And if you thought people are done sharing other brutally honest opinions, well, they're not. Just sit and wait. And of course, they're still online beefing. Let's get into it. Say what you want about me, bro. I'm not going too many places where there's too many black people. Have you been to a family reunion before? It gets nasty. I have. I've been to a mini of barbecues because, uh, you know, I was given my end card by a lot of my friends. And it is quite different from my own family's get together. I'll invite my black friends to my family get together. <laughs> they look at my family get together and like, there's no fighting. You guys all get along and you, all you guys are doing is just drinking and talking and eating and the kids are just playing like it's a normal thing for us. And even my family now has gotten a little bit more modern where for birthday parties and stuff, they'll get pinatas and things for the kids to just have fun. But I've experienced how barbecues and a lot of these get togethers with your community, the black community works. I've been to a lot of them. <laughs> Kickbacks parties too many black people in one place is a recipe for disaster bro and i'm black so i can say this i'm not gonna lie i've been seeing a lot of us yes you are black you probably can say this but it's weird to say that you know it's like i don't want to be in a group of a lot of asians together because uh there's too chinky you know or something like that in between like there's always that group that badness that that kind of ruins everything i don't think the whole group is really bad but there's always yes because the group gets so big there's always gonna be a bad actor in it i i can see where they're going for that a lot of white people say it too but i i'm not checking them because they're right i'm not gonna lie bro some of y'all get around other black folk and y'all just don't know how to act at all all motor function out of the window y'all just completely forgot how to act bro i was raised in the suburbs bro i know how to behave if they're not, if there's not like a, a 60, 40 ratio, like 70, 30 is max. I'm going black to white, bro. Once we get to that 80, 20 range, people start fighting. People start shooting up the place. It start getting nasty. I don't even stay at my family reunions too long before somebody get to fighting. You know how crazy you got to be to fight at a family reunion. I've seen three fights at three barbecues. They weren't family reunions, but they were barbecues. And it was uh, my friend's cousins getting into it was one. And then another one was uh, my another friend's, their two uncles got into it. And then uh, another one was an aunt and an uncle. So, but they were siblings. They weren't like, you know, married couple or anything. They were just siblings and they got into it. So. You want to fight your cousins, my nigga? And cousins always got beef. I don't know what it is. So nah, bro, a HBCU uh, cruise, it sounds like a bad idea, bro. It sounds like a bad idea. I get what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to bring the community together. But there's a reason the community's apart, bro. I think when we're working together, it's bad news. All right, guys, listen, I wasn't going to read the comments for that video, but they were just too hilarious. This is definitely one of those beliefs that a lot of black people live by. But again, this person only feels comfortable actually saying it out loud because of the trend. And I bet. Yeah, I'm surprised he said it out loud. Does it say what he said was pretty. There are some people who would call him anti-black for not wanting to be in spaces that have too many black people. What do you guys think of that? I, got some I don't think there was any issue with that. If that's what you're kind of preferencing. He doesn't hate black people. He just, he is wary that as a group, we get a little, no, not we, sorry. As a group, black people get a little riled up when there's a lot of them. So he doesn't like that, I guess. And then there's probably some undertones of racism in there. But as, as a person viewing it from outside, it seems legitimate to me. Some of these comments with people I have to say. First comment here says, my cousins tried to fight at my grandmother's funeral, haven't seen him since. It's turned into a thread of other people who went through the same thing. The guy responded says, nah, cause me and one of my brothers fought at my grandma's funeral and our cousins made a little circle around us. What? Uh, somebody else responded and says, that's wild, man. Why? 
And another one here says, mine's too. And my daddy's. <laughs> so I got more comments. Another person here says, and the thing with the cruise is you can't leave. Mm. You can't escape that cruise once things go south. Here's somebody else who says, he ain't lie one time. Here's another person that says, I know how to behave is crazy. So he's quoting him there in the video. Another person responded back and said, how is that crazy? To behave like a normal, respectful, and problematic human? Not the opposite. And he responded back and says, it's the right thing to do. It's just funny to say it in this context. It's true. Here's another person who just left laughing emoji and says, I love my people, but no. Got another comment here from another person that says, I don't even cruise with Carnival for that reason alone. Which is followed by another comment here that reads, no lies been told. Here's somebody else who says, we are a vibe, Urkel. LOL, making fun of him because of the glasses. Another person responded back with the laughing emojis. Here's somebody else who says, I love my team, but we be doing too much. I'm good. We'll sit on deck and look at nature. See, I'm happy about this because these people acknowledge that there's issues within the community. There's people that have issues, you know, and instead of just, oh, no, we're all great. And, you know, that's, that's, that's not true. I like that people acknowledge these things. Because there's bad things in my community too. In my in Asians community, we really hate each other. <laughs> like Cambodians really hate Vietnamese people. Like really hate each other. <laughs> Here's somebody else who says, you remind me of somebody from a different world. And another comment here says, my cousins were about to fight at my grandma's birthday party. Birthday? five o was called. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I said it. That's what I'm talking about. The anxiety that you feel around these hood black people is secondhand embarrassment. Because you you be out here performing for the white gays. You be out here performing. You be out here putting on a show. You be letting a lot of shit slide. You be letting people touch your hair. Then you get around so-called hood black people and see them with a freedom of expression. See them being loud. See them having a good time. This isn't how you were trained to be. You're supposed to be buttoned up. You're supposed to be a magical Negro. You think you're better than them. They can pick up on that. They're people. You don't think you can tell when you think you better than? Get around your cousins. Try to have, have your nose all turned up. That's you internalizing anti-blackness. All the time. Letting shit slide. Letting. I don't know if it's internalizing the anti-blackness, but it might be internalizing the, the, the behaviors that everybody acts within the neighborhood. This is uh. microaggression slide trying to put your best foot forward to be a magical Negro comforting the whites. That's that's such a weird term to say the, the magical N word thing. Like, I think people just want to acclimate to society and society here is white. It can't be helped. So you got to acclimate somewhat to society. Even Asian people do it. Hispanic people do it. It's just what you kind of have to do. In the suburbs, letting them say stupid shit to you and laughing it off. Damn, my lips ashy. <clears throat> <laughs> Don't be anti-black about that. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the trend right now going around about people saying that they are uncomfortable around like hood black people and i want to say it is so funny to me or ghetto black people hood or ghetto whatever it is so funny to me because ghetto hood black people literally say whatever is on their mind whatever is on their mind but it's like the second that someone that is suburban or whitewashed or that y'all feel like should just shut up and be quiet and take scraps or abuse or bullying because that's what it is um speaks out about their experience even if it's not even in a negative way or like a personal attack way because y'all get in people's comments that are y'all deem whitewash and bully them every single day on this app people may it's weird that they use whitewash because whitewash was a term used for something else it was used to actually <clears throat> when the cities um had thrown these major world events and stuff they would literally paint all the buildings white and all the streets and everything white and that would be whitewashed, but it got bastardized into, you know, other cultures wanting to acclimate to white culture, I guess. It doesn't even make sense. 
<laughs> in general post saying I'm uncomfortable around this cer certain group of people and here's why and y'all are like bullying them as well so it's like y'all can say whatever y'all want to whoever and it's like when that energy is given to y'all y'all are upset of course one point number one point number two I want to address is I saw someone in a video saying like it's anti-black one who cares if like I don't care if someone calls me anti-black I'm gonna date whoever I want I'm gonna wear whatever I want I'm gonna talk however I want I'm gonna wear my hair however I want and if you're gonna call me anti-black for any of those things I don't care I really agreed People call me anti-black because I put Candace Owens on. She's apparently anti-men, black men or something, according to some people. Or I put on certain creators and whatever it is. Or I, t I speak about BBLs and I'm Asian. And it's funny because I'm Asian and I'm not black to be able to speak about BBLs as if Asian women don't get BBLs too. Not on mass like black women do, but there are some Asian women that do it. I've seen it. I live in Southern California where there is a huge Asian population that is also within a huge black population. So the two sides do intermingle quite a bit. We don't care. Like the word anti-black is so chronically online. Every year y'all come up with a new word to just talk about the black people that y'all don't like. Mm. I'm still going to be black at the end of the day. So take it or leave it bye um but point number two is that i saw someone talking about y'all say y'all are scared to hood people but y'all listen to people like sukiana and sexy red listening to someone for entertainment i listen to drake i listen to kanye i listen to all these people in my life is nothing like theirs and i don't know them in real life listening to someone for entertainment purposes um it's not the same thing as being in the hood in real life like what kind of comparison is that also mm, everyone isn't gonna make it in the entertainment um, industry and also I don't hang around girls like sexy red I mean sexy red seems kind of fun to hang around like I would hang around her like if I saw her out like hey and then I would move on with my life but Sukiyana when she was like in I forgot what country she was in and she had videos of her saying like being vulgar just out in Get public like that is embarrassing stretched. that's uncouth like I would not hang around somebody like that nothing wrong with her nothing against her but like that is not the way that I would act in public nor would I hang around someone acting like that so what is, what are y'all talking about Point number three is people were saying, oh, get a journal. I don't care. This trend is stupid. Y'all, once again, stop trying to tell people, one, what their experience is and isn't, what they meant and what they didn't mean. Because I also saw video people making videos saying, y'all just are talking about criminals. Y'all aren't talking about hood people. No, I'm talking about hood people and criminals. Criminals criminals come in all races and i don't mess with criminals i don't mess with hillbilly white people i don't mess with ghetto hood black people like i'm talking about all three stop trying to speak for people it just it just bothers me how y'all get on here every day and bully people and then when those people that are bullied speak out about their experience y'all get mad and it's like to me if i'm being 100 percent honest it feels like a this feels this is the exact position that men are in this is men we can't talk about our things because then we're misogynistic you know, we, we have the privilege, so we shouldn't be able to talk about things. We just should go write in our little journals and go cry in a corner you know, by ourselves. They don't care about our issues. This is, this is very similar. I know I, I intermingle with the, the race and the, the, the men and women issue, but they actually are very similar a form of jealousy and not even jealousy directly with that person but i feel like it's some form of i am jealous that this person grew up in a better situation than i did and it's like you know take that up with therapy get a therapist boo get a therapist instead of projecting your hatred and your jealousy onto someone else and last thing i want to address is i saw a comment of a few comments like this where people would be like well i was bullied by hood black girls or whatever hood people but i you know i'm not choosing to let that affect my opinion of them all well, that's you, baby. Everybody doesn't feel that way. I wasn't bullied by hood black people growing up. I had a few family members that were that said a few things. I wouldn't say that it was bullying, but it's like I don't associate with people that I feel like are going to judge me for my personal decisions, who I date, what I. My story, I got bullied a lot by hood guys and hood girls. To tell the truth, I was a nerdy little Asian kid that didn't really speak English, that didn't really know much. I got bullied a lot, you know. Like, they'll call me, like, chop nuts and, you know, fucking ching chong. It's just, I'm not going to go through it. But it's weird that they would, these are the people that kind of portray that racism towards me, towards, like, a lot of my friends and, you know, the group of people. But whenever we ever said anything that they did, then, you know, then now, yes, we were the racists. We were the bad ones. And it's funny because I had my black friends that were from the hood would defend me and they didn't give a fuck <laughs> like and he was just 
just as good at like I don't know how to say it, like just as hood like they are because I hung out with some hoodie friends, but like it didn't matter. Like just like I just because I got the end card with my friends, like all these other guys are like, no, you didn't get you didn't earn it with us. <laughs> where if you're gonna make little snarky comments or you're gonna make fun of me then i'm not gonna mess with you period and nobody should no one has to put up with abuse or people talking down to them and i saw comments as well being like um what were the comments saying the comments were like they were like well hook girls will get you together and you know whatever but it's fine no i don't need someone in my life who's gonna tell me about myself or get me together like i'm grown i don't need you to get me together so that's fine if that's who you are and that's how you are and that's the culture that you want to live in that's fine but not everyone wants to live with people or be around people that judge them i will say i've been friends with all groups of people and everyone that i'm friends with or have been friends with were not people that put me down for the way that i talked or the way i wore my hair or judged me or made me feel like the brunt of a joke because that's not the type of behavior that is acceptable for me so i'm just so tired of it honestly like y'all y'all have to get Y'all have to just get a life. And honestly, at the end of the day, like bullying people for having an opinion only makes people not express their opinion, but it doesn't change it. And I feel like a lot of people also made videos and were like, same thing with men. You can bully us and shame us for our opinions all you want. Our opinions ain't changing. I'm shocked that so many people are agreeing. And it's like, we feel this way, but the reason why we don't express it is because y'all clown people who express it, but it, clowning people doesn't change the way that we feel. Like so many people feel this way and whether y'all choose to agree or accept it or not, like the feeling is still there. So whatever, I'm gonna do me. I think this is funny, but I wanted to give my take. I think she did. She articulated that very well. On it because I'm so tired of people saying it's anti-black, who cares? Who cares? All right. Some of y'all should be really disgusted with yourselves, man. In my last video, I kept it cordial with the as a black person, I'm afraid to admit this reaction to y'all talking about the hood. But now I'm seeing even more videos of our own people segmentating us or segmenting us. And, and, and they, it's kind of like a we're the good ones. And then you guys over there are the bad one. Like that's that's legit what y'all doing. And then y'all talking down on your own people. You feel me? Like if you don't, if you if you don't frequent the hood, you don't go to the hood. You don't got no friends, no family. You no, know, like you feel me? You don't understand the hood and how it works. And you speaking from an outside perspective, like you felt a little uncomfortable a few times you went there. You don't have the authority to speak on things. You feel me? Like some of y'all really talking from a space of like, oh, we're better than thou. Like really looking down on things you don't understand. I don't think you have to be in something to have an opinion and judge something. Like people, it ain't the wild, <laughs> wild west. Like y'all think people just running around shooting, killing, robbing, and stealing. <laughs> you feel me? And and there's more that goes behind it. And that's not me abstaining the hood from like all of the negative things that happen and saying this is all good and okay. No, there's things we want to change. You feel me? But that doesn't mean that like, yes, there's some bad people that, that can be from the hood. But y'all, y'all lumping people in a group. You know how many doctors I know from the hood? I went to a, a school in the middle of two hoods that beef with each other. Four of my friends are now doctors mm, from the trenches, sir, from the hood. Like, like, what? Like, I don't, I don't, yo, man. It's real frustrating. It's real frustrating to hear some people that that look like me, that 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 talk like me, that the police will pull over and get the same treatment as me. Talk down on our own people like this, bro. Like y'all should really be disgusted with yourselves, man. You feel me? If nobody gonna tell y'all I am, bro, that's it's it's messed up, bro. Real shit. I'm not gonna hold you, but I digress, man. We need to do better as a people. Like I said, man, we need to stop beefing with each other over every little thing, bro. Real rap. It's not just you guys. Again, I tell you, a Asians seem to be lumped into one big group, just like black people's lumped into one big group, Africans and all that stuff. So, but all Asian countries do not like each other. <laughs> like Vietnam and, and Cambodia as two countries are kind of still warring at each other. <laughs> they really hate each other. My, my whole family talks mad shit on Vietnamese people. And I married a Vietnamese woman, so it was very, very interesting to have a wife that was 
a race that your whole family really dislikes. Yo, hit that follow button. Go subscribe to the YouTube in the bio, man. Mahalo at y'all. Well, I know we all been seeing this trend about uh, people from the hood. I make me uncomfortable and blah, blah, blah. I'm black. I'm not afraid to admit it, right? I even had my little my little video about it. It did, it did numbers. It did like three, 400K. Basically, so my what? take was hood dudes don't really mess with you. Uh, women really get the worst of it because girls from the hood, they be some bullies. I've never actually had a bad experience with somebody from the hood, ever, right? This is basically my take on it. But now I'm starting to see all these think pieces from these people who are supposedly so hood talking about anybody think about y'all y'all dehumanizing black people y'all got the same talking points as white supremacists ah ah listen black people who don't like to take accountability first of all in my video i never said black people but it seems to be only black people responding to it i'm mm. from florida florida man is never black remember that secondly i do be on some bullshit and they talk this is true again i i don't really want to disclose where my shop was and stuff because then you guys can figure out my real stuff but yeah, we owned a gas station in quite the ghetto in California, mm, not naming any names, but it was literally a group of Hispanics, a group of whites, and then a group of blacks. Uh, there was more blacks than most, but we got each group and each of them interacted with us quite differently at our at our gas station. Tell the truth, all the black people loved us. We're I don't know. It's like 50-50. Some black people loved us. Some black people hate us. Because we, we're we Asian. Just like most of those, you know, the hood movies and stuff, Asian people really do pay attention to what you're doing in the shop. We really do. I admit it. Because we, yes, we think you're going to steal. And it's not because you're black. It is because you're in our shop. <laughs> we do it to everyone. And even the black people that see us do it to even white people and, and, and Hispanic people, they even said it to us. And they're like, oh, you just don't, you don't even just, they're like, you don't even just do it to us. You do it to everyone. No, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel so bad. And I'm like, <laughs> I straight up tell them, yeah, people steal. It's just people. It's not that you're black, Hispanic, white or anything. No, all of you guys steal. <laughs> Everybody from every race steals. So we just pay attention to our shop. Why? My family came from a very communist country. We had nothing. Everything that we've earned in this country, we've worked very hard for. So my dad, how he views things, he's not willing for people to steal from him when he's worked so hard to get all of what he's has. It, it, it's not deserving of it. So we are very on it when people are stealing. We, we track them with our cameras. We track them with our eyes. Sometimes I'll walk out there and just kind of, you know. And sure, it's discriminatory. Sure, it's probably not the greatest thing to, you know, treat people. I, I, I agree. But we lived in such an area to where it happened too often to where we had to deal with it that way. And I think most Asians, most people... They have to deal with it that way because every time you, things get stolen, that's stealing money out of our pockets. The stuff that we already bought. Just how I feel about it. Talking about closing down motherfucking Walmarts and shit because the kids keep coming in, running through the shit. Who do you think they talking about? Mm. Kids from the burbs? No. Uh-uh. Generally, when we talk about people from the hood, we talking about from the ages of 15 till about 26, 27. Till they start, about, till they start dying. Or Ooh. having too many kids. A little harsh, yeah. but... Or going to jail. There's always jail. But they just calm the fuck down. When they talk about closing stores and shit, it'd be 16 to 19 year olds in there fucking shit up. When they talk about shootings at the clubs, that'd be 21 to 26, 27 year olds in there shooting shit up. Bunch of women fighting in the streets. What you think, them soccer moms? <laughs> Those ain't soccer moms. That's y'all from the hood. We, we not gonna sit around and act like y'all and oh actually we're not doing shit like that no y'all be doing crazy shit just because i haven't had a bad experience don't mean that i don't see what the fuck be going on i'm a big ass nigga really people don't fuck with me generally he looks if i never opened my mouth i probably look like i'm from the hood so i can't observe though y'all be acting a ass don't act like y'all don't be acting a ass you know i see we're back on the topic right that, that it's awakening hood TikTok because apparently the hood people are offended that people are saying that they're scared to go to the hood. Bruh, let me tell y'all something. I am from Memphis, Tennessee, born and raised. 
I lived in Kingsgate's apartments. Went to Winchester Elementary School and went to a Maceo Walker Middle School. Now, let me tell you something. When I moved out those apartments, I lived in Raleigh for like half a school year. I went to Craigmont Middle. Then I went to Unknown Ass School because we went we moved to Cordova. I went to Unknown Ass School called Riverdale. Never heard of it until I moved out there. Then I graduated from Germantown High School, right? And then after I graduated, I was like, let me go back to the hood. I went back to King Gates and let me tell you something. I was petrified. <laughs> Scared. This kind of reminds me of Friday 2 when um, uh, Cube's cousins and stuff lived in a very nice neighborhood and they don't want to go back to the ghetto because they live in a nice neighborhood. But it's hard to want to go back to something that was less than what you've experienced. I'm not saying you... <laughs> that probably sounded a little bit bad, but it's okay. You know, like if you've already gotten yourself out of poverty and you've already like experienced what it is outside of it, you probably wouldn't want to go back into it. And the, the neighborhoods really matter. I remember watching a lot of um, documentaries of single mother households being given choices for Section A. They were either given the choice to stay where they are, which usually wasn't what they, they accepted, or to go into a suburb. Or it's take their child to a more white, affluent area. I don't want to say it like that. It just sounds weird. And from research, what research shows, the the families that went to the more affluent white areas, the less ghetto area, the less hood areas, ended up doing very, very well. They became general generational wealth for their family at that from the the, the kids that went there and got raised into those school into those systems and when they became in their 30s and stuff they became the generational wealth for their family and that happened a lot so the environment is very telling of what's going to happen or how easy it is for people to become successful and once you're successful why would you want to give yourself a leg down again it's just my opinion scared bro and i was raised there i still knew people that lived there but let me tell you something once you live on the good side, you know where you get a peace of mind. And once you go back into that jungle, you're never going to feel the same. Let's see what else we have here. All right. So this guy says, I'm black and I used to be afraid to admit this. And he's given his opinion. Let's get it. The I'm black and I used to be afraid to admit this trend is hilarious. But a lot of that shit is relatable as hell, y'all. So I was scrolling through, I was right. laughing at a few of them or whatever, and there was one that stuck out to me the most. It was basically this dude saying that he was afraid to admit that because he can speak properly and because he has a uh, extensive vocabulary that he's whitewashed. Mm. And I couldn't tell you how many times I get that shit a day, bro. Still to this day. Mm. So I grew up in the hood, but then I transferred schools like middle school and I went to the suburbs, bro. So when I made that transition, it was weird as so I'm telling you, people that the, the kids that were able to transition to the suburbs ended up doing very, very well. But then they got alienated by <laughs> the people that they actually originally came from. Because at one point, they just tell me, oh, you're too hood to go to this school. And it was in a nice neighborhood. Mm. And then as I got older, people started telling me like, damn, bro, you white as hell. Or you sound white. Or this, that, and a third because of my vocabulary and like the way I was articulating myself. Right. So which one is it, bro? But yeah, I still get that shit to this day, man. That shit crazy as fuck. Like, how the f makes sense? Like a nigga can't be smart or some shit? Like, what the f <laughs> <laughs> shit, That shit is hella funny. It is. I see the comments. Uh, like I said, my best friend, I, I grew up with him since middle school. He's considered a lame, high achiever. He has a PhD now. He works for Google. Yeah, a lot of people call him lame. This is a different friend than the one I grew up with in, element, in elementary school. Elementary school was my super hood friend, and we were super hood together. We just went around beating the shit out of all these kids that talk shit about us. <laughs> you know, that was that was my elementary school. And then I, I got a little bit wiser and a little bit less ghetto myself <laughs> and then went to high school uh so the top comment here says so you still say this is happening so does that mean you still hang with ghetto black people 
right? Dot, dot, dot. Because who is still picking on you about that? Unless your associates are less articulate than you. He responds and says, I think it's because they don't expect it because of my tattoos or stuff I post. I don't know. Somebody else just says, just because you grew up in the hood doesn't mean you got to stay in the hood. He responds back and says, I agree, bro. Went to the suburbs. It was a culture shock, but it was for the better. Yeah. So one of the Paso boys, uh, I hope they're doing well. I haven't been able to talk to them for a while, but they're on a tour or whatever it's called. And uh, one of them would, would say he never experienced anything different. He grew up in the hood. And then when he became a soldier, he joined the military. He, they sent him to Texas. And so in Texas, this is when he experienced outside of the hood. And he was just like, oh, my God, I didn't know there were other women out here that weren't like the women that I've always dealt with. It is crazy that some people, not just some, a lot of people, if they don't see what's outside of their zone, they will never know what's out there. And they, it, they will never know the experience and they never know that that is something that is achievable. Like I said, that uh, the El Paso boys, when he told me that or when her his uh, sergeant shared that story with me and I was just like, oh, wow. That makes somewhat sense because when I was young in elementary school, I went to a really like somewhat ghetto elementary school, and I thought everybody, I thought America was like that. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I thought most of America was somewhat like that, and everything. And then I went to middle school, high school. It was a different environment. Then I was just like, oh, maybe not everything is like that. So, so when younger kids get to experience difference it matters um i'm going to use this trend to call out some experiences that i've had with suburban black people because for some reason most people on this trend seem to think that these things only apply to the hood so i'm just going to paint a small picture of how terrible i have been treated by suburban black people mm. um when Talk to us. i was in college i was ostracized othered excluded from a lot of things because i wasn't their type of black mm, um when true. i was in college I, I, I can see this i can see this i was at a party and a song came on that i liked and i was like hey and they all gave me the nastiest looks i have ever seen in my life uh my name was track booty on campus because once again y'all hypersexualize hood black women nobody bothered guys I'm actually following what she says because I'm interested. But who hypersexualizes? Good. Who? What? I'm a little confused by that too. I mean, they might have called you that because you have a big booty. Does the media and do we push that and support it? To um, learn my name, and then when the one person who decided to spill the tea told me that they thought I was aggressive and mean and a. What else? Um, I've had suburban black men tell me that I am not worthy of marriage due to how I grew up in my household and then Ooh, try to use harsh. their education to. Oh, I mean, they might have said that if you grew up with a single mother household. I'm just spitballing. If you grew up in a single mother household, I mean, I can see why men would say, you know, the household you grew up in probably isn't the best. To manipulate me into becoming the subservient woman that they want. Okay, okay, so she she might be subservient, feminist. Uh, sounds like a big boss babe to me. Modern woman, here. I'm sensing here. Just calling it as it is. Um, I have had a suburban boy take me in his neighborhood, look me in my face, and tell me, "Yeah, girl, this is different than the projects. You ain't never seen nothing like this, huh?" Okay, that's. I'm gonna call cap on this shit. There's just no way, some guy just took you to his neighborhood and just said look at all this you're never gonna be able to achieve this i don't see that ever happening what the fuck um and last that's not crazy least, i refuse to work in corporate settings i work at a hotel i refuse to get a serious high level high paying job because of why how traumatized i am by the way suburban black people treated me i do not want to deal with white people and suburban black people trying to step on me because that's how y'all act like many caucasian people 
many white supremacists is how you will act y'all use hood black people as martyrs to get what you want and when those hood black people don't act within the bounds to help you get your way or what you deem is acceptable you other ostracize and criticize just like your white counterparts i think that's what hood people do too they ostracize the more educated guys the more less ghetto guys the lames as most women say so it's happening on both sides I was going to end this after the kiss, but I have more to add. I also want to say, I expect that type of behavior from white people. I'm going to just say that. I expect that from white people. It was a shock. It was a culture shock to me to get to college and have black people treat me how the white people back home used to treat me. That shit is crazy. And I know y'all hate to say, well, you, 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 you're whitewash, you're this, you're that. But subconsciously, I don't think y'all realize how deep it runs. Like, y'all legitimately have a problem. We have our problems in the hood, but our problems don't stop you from getting to the next level. Do you understand that? Mm. You ostracize yourself by that. Mm. We don't do that. We don't have the access to ostracize you. Y'all do, and that's the type of shit y'all do. Mm. Mm. I think she made a pretty valid point there towards the end. Somewhat, yeah. we'll, we'll address that. Let's see, let's see what some of these comments have to say. This first comment says, we need to unpack about how college is a lovely breeding ground for all the isms. Somebody else who says, True. Gen X here, and where I grew up, they were, in quotations, hood, quotations, suburbia, and affluent. And the affluent was the damn problem. Burbs and the hood actually got along, but affluent, nope. Yeah, I mean, in my suburb, good area in high school everybody got a lot well now i can't say everybody got a lot but most people got a lot they acted like that somebody else who says i'm a black suburban woman i believe you they are digested and well elite here is another video that i think is worth looking at let's get it i never thought that i would say this but y'all actually made me cry from this app i never want to get up here with tears in my eyes but the trend, I used to be too afraid to say this as a black person, but then a lady said that she's scared around hood people. I ended up going down a rabbit hole and watching a few of the videos and explanations of people who agreed with her statement. And I just came on here to let you know, you need to check your biases at the door. Check your bigotry at the door. Because what's happened is that you feel like this about hood people and then you get into the workforce and you have to work with someone who's a hood husband, just like me. And your biases show. Stands offish, blocking people's money, blocking people's success, because you are questioning why a hood that you're scared of is excelling more than you are. And I've had this happen to me so many times from other black people. Mm. It's hurt my feelings so much over the years because I just want to know what it's from. But now I know it's that level of insecurity and that you're scared, afraid. I've had black people that are. People aren't even allowed to say they're afraid anymore. What's wrong with that? Like, <laughs> they're afraid of certain groups of people that are portrayed, but, but that portray themselves pretty scary. I've worked with in the past, question why I get paid the amount I get paid, why I have so much authority at this workplace. I've had them go and double check my work, something that nobody asked them to do, but since they think for whatever reason, I'm not capable of doing a job. I've had other black people go double check my work that nobody asked them to do. And I really think it got to me this morning because I'm like, it's okay to have those feelings. I really don't care how you feel. But when it spills over into the workplace and then the person on the receiving end can't pinpoint or can't verbalize why you're being treated the way you are from people who look just like you, it's disheartening. Y'all have these biases and y'all carrying them into the workplace. Y'all are teaching y'all kids this. It's carrying on into the schools. It's all around all because you are afraid. You need to sit down and go speak to the lady. I read the comment and it's all types of ignorant statements on why you scared of hood people and why you scared of the da 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 and this, this, that, and the All right. I'm a Cambodian. We're probably one of the hoodest of all the Asians. We're the number one Asian gang in the United States for being a very, very small population of Asians here. People view it Cambodians as very ghetto, very, you know, that type the 
the gangstery, the which a good chunk of us are. But then there's the other side of the fa- the, the business owners. So Cambodians really got split into two major groups in California, at least. There is the business owners, all of the Cambodians that own the donut shops, which 95% of all donut shops in in California is owned by Cambodians, just to let you guys know. <laughs> those people and then all the other Cambodians that maybe work for those people or just have normal jobs in Long Beach and stuff like that actually do not get along with each other. My family... Someone looks down on people that don't come from a great pedigree. And those guys look down on us because they think that we're better than them. Or they think that we think that we're better than them. Which, some cases yes, some cases no. But even within our Cambodians, in California, there is a side battle of the privileged and the not privileged. And I think that's more than what it really is. It's the privileged versus the not privileged. The people that were able to get out, able to do a lot of these things. Yes, they do somewhat look down on it because they've been able to get out of it. It is what it is. I can't. Third, y'all sound just like white people who just base us on the color of our skin. Y'all are judging all people off of huh? one experience that y'all had that one time y'all was in the ghetto one time. And let me tell you what that, ends up happening girl. in my experience. I ends up working with somebody for three, four months and he ends up coming up to me saying, oh, you're so cool. You're nothing like what I thought you would be. And then when I put a clear divide between us, I'm wrong. Now I'm standoffish. I have an attitude, all of these things because I don't want you around me because you judge me for no reason. And I don't like people like that. They- Shut up. Everybody judges people. It is what it is. It's I, I'm going to judge someone how they look. And then once I get to know them, so a lot of that judgment goes away or it gets confirmed. That's how it works. And you run around with the rest of the brigade saying, I don't think she likes me. I don't think she really likes me. No, you judge me for no reason. And I don't want to be around you. I don't care if you change your judgment of me now. You think highly of me. You should have never judged me from the beginning, and now you can never be around. People aren't allowed to change their minds? Come on. Some people don't know. Some people, I, I, I agree, it's not great to be judging people, and it's not a good thing, but people do it. And if you were able to change their opinion of you, that means you're a good person. You were, you did things right. <laughs> That's how I view it, at least. You know, if you were, like, if people see me as misogynist, and I go to them and they, they get to know me and they're like, oh, damn, you're not misogynist at all. Why would I get upset at that? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> now there's a clear divide. Now I do have the attitude you thought I had before. And now don't be. So you just confirmed what they said by you being upset. And now you're even affirming that, that the behavior and what they thought was going to happen. Why would you do that? Chummy. Don't try to be friends with me. Don't try to be chummy chummy with me. I don't care if we both the only two black girls here and all that other stuff. Mm-mm. I never judged you. I gave you a clean slate from the day I met you. You was just a human. And now that you showed me your true colors because you judge me, I'm the wrong one. That's what always ends up happening. It's just, ugh. I want y'all to check your biases and your bigotry. I want y'all to figure this out before y'all start passing this down to the kids. Because the ignorance is wild. Y'all are weird. I'm not telling you to let your guards down, but I'm telling you stop being so judgmental because anybody from the hood know rule number one is as long as you mind your business, nine times out of ten, you're going to be all right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would disagree with that. And not for nothing, the people that y'all scared of, they could feel that you scared of them. That's why they pray on y'all. That's why they bother y'all because they know who to play with. They could smell the fear coming off you. That's why they think- Oh, you say that, but earlier in the thing you said, oh, I didn't know it was because of fear. I didn't know it was because they were afraid of me. You just contradicted yourself. Which I like that. Anyway, check out biases. I'm not crying and I'm not mad no more. Mm. Hold on. You seem a little mad when you did that. Biases. I'm not crying and I'm not mad no more. Oh, she did. Um... 
What do you think she said? Regardless, I'm going to give this chick the benefit of the doubt. I'll say this. I think she has a valid point in this context. If there are people who work in corporate America and they come across, and I'm talking about black people here. If you're a black person who works in corporate America and you identify with being more suburban and having more suburban roots, and you come across somebody who sounds good to you or also has identified as being hood as she has i think it is wrong to assume that they may be incompetent or they just have a hood mindset i agree that goes without saying though right but, but people do like it my mother used to say common sense isn't that common so i think a lot of people do this without realizing it most people have judgments most people look at a certain white man for example who's wearing an american flag and think oh racist probably going to vote for donald trump most people can look at someone like yeah her and say oh you sound hood and you probably have a hood mentality of uh, approaching life in general and you have to be open to the realization that you may be wrong i think when she's talking about biases that's what she means by you have to check those because maybe you're in a position of power and you may be judging somebody and may just 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 may not like somebody for how they sound but they actually may be competent when it comes to what they do and they work that they do listen Here's my very short conclusion to this whole thing, because I'll be honest with you guys, there's a lot that was said, and I want to know what you personally think. That's what I'm actually here to read. I want to know your thoughts. That's the purpose of this video. Comment your thoughts down below. I'm curious. This is a highly interesting topic to me. But I'll say this. If I'm going to take some wisdom or share any wisdom with anybody about this particular topic, it's going to be this. The wisdom that I think most people would benefit from here if they, were, if they were to learn something, it's number one, all black people aren't the same. Correct. Just because you don't fit into a stereotypical box of what is expected as a black person, the way you talk, the things you enjoy, your views on life, it doesn't mean that you're not black. It doesn't mean that you're not black. That statement in itself is controversial because, again, within the black community, people want to divide and divide and divide. If you were raised here most of your life but not born here, you're not black. If you look black but don't sound black, you're not black, right? It goes on. It goes on and on. But don't believe it. I'd say that. Also, wisdom is also realizing, though, that not everybody who's from the hood or may sound hood to you or maybe even identify as hood will fit into what most people would generally define as a hood mentality you can argue what that definition is but you know what i mean how people view them and tell what she was talking about that she's not willing to go into detail for him because she was raised in the hood and doesn't want to explain herself. She's just like, man, if you don't get it, you just want to argue. But not everybody who sounds like oh, is from the hood, because she was from the hood, she doesn't fit into that idea that she was trying to say she's afraid of, that mentality of people that she's afraid of. She doesn't fit into that. And the only way you can know that isn't by looking at somebody and making a judgment for sure. Yes, presentation does matter. It does. But the only way you can truly know that is by talking to people. True. And that requires bravery. People don't want to sound stupid, so they don't want to break certain social um, norms. Uh, you don't want to talk to somebody because you're like, ah, they might I say I sound stupid all the time. <laughs> might judge me because they may think I don't talk proper or they may think I talk too proper. You have to talk to somebody to figure out how they work and, and their mentality. That's how you learn. But again, I would say the way you carry yourself matters to some extent. To does a major play a extent. Sometimes you don't need to talk to anybody for them anymore um, than just watching them in a specific type of situation. True. Seeing how they react. Both can be true. Overall, this is a really interesting conversation to me. I don't do videos like this very often. And um, I'm curious to see what the result will be in this video. Guys, I'm curious to know what you think. Long video. Comment down below.
Appreciate y'all. Shout out to Sushi Zed. I have a major story when it pertaining to this about, you know, me going to jail and, you know, the double murder and stuff. It actually is very similar to this particular topic. I'm not going to tell this story yet. I'm not sure if I want to wait till 50,000 or 100,000 to tell this story because this story, if I tell this story, you guys will be able to easily figure out like my real name, my family and all these things. So I have to really think about how to change things up to where it's not so easy for you guys to be able to find my family and stuff. I just don't want, you know, any bad actors to try to harm my family in any way. Please subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.